And now we're going to HITC Sport and don't, don't you dare give the Everton job to Wayne Rooney. Don't do it! Auntie, to Everton as a club, just enjoy sticking pointy Lego pieces in their eyes. While you're at it, why don't you also try and swallow the kitchen lamp? You know, maybe you can see how many pints of toilet water you can swallow before you end up vomiting up your own spleen. I don't get it. It seems that Farhad Moshiri, while he is a very wealthy and successful businessman, but clearly when it comes to football, he's about as clever as one of Shrek's kids. You know, the ones who were starting the auction of Fiona's womb. You know, the ones who probably eat toast with a spoon. Apparently, the club's number one choice to replace Rafa Benitez is Roberto Martinez. This just reminds me of when Mike Ashley, in his sweaty desperation, tried to bring back Sam Allardyce to Newcastle three years ago. I'm sorry, do these men just forget? They were the first managers that you sacked. Crawling on your hands and knees back to a former weekend coach, a man who was hounded out of the club in 2016, and let's not forget, he won just six of his last 25 league games as Everton's coach. Is that really what you want to go back to? A relationship about as healthy as Sid and Nancy's? And that was when he had a top class spine of John Stones, Ross Barkley, and Romelu Lukaku. Now, give him the likes of Michael Keane, Allen, and Damari Gray, and he'll probably happily stick a bread knife up his nose halfway through the medical, anything to get out of this return. Why would he give up the 2022 World Cup to spend this Christmas sharing a lasagna in the canteen with Leighton Baines? No! And since leaving Everton, he's been given the Belgium goal to generation. What's he done? Sure, you dragged. Belgium to third of the 2018 World Cup, but you also were nearly dumped out of that competition by Japan. And recently, you just failed at Euro 2020 with arguably one of the best squads of the competition. But whatever about Bobby M, the links to Wayne Rooney. Oh, that is what makes me sick to my bowels. Ugh, right now I can feel the soft taste of banana flavored cornflakes in my throat. This makes about as much sense as Kanye West running for president. I hate this modern day trend of clubs just needlessly giving the important role of manager to just some popular ex-pro. But at least, if, if you're going to hire a former club legend, then do it right. For example, Mikel Arteta should really have been given the Everton job because that's where he made his name. While Patrick Vieira, instead of being earmarked for the Man City gig one day, he really should right now be the manager of Arsenal. I mean, even Andrea Perlo. To me, he should have begun his coaching career as manager of AC Milan. I mean, if Clarence Seydorf could do it. So similarly, if Wayne Rooney is going to manage his former club, then it should be Manchester United. You know, the club where he is an actual legend. Let's be honest here, Rooney quit Everton at 18 years of age. The man showed utterly no respect for the club by handing David Moyes a transfer request that he'd scribbled on the back of a grubby canteen napkin. Something he'd probably just use to wipe ketchup and snot off his chin. This man is not an Everton legend. Of his 366 career goals, he gave just 28 of them to Everton Football Club. I'm sorry, no, no! Can we please stop painting the Rooney and Everton relationship as being something out of Romeo and Juliet? If this was Hollywood, then it would just be the story of some guy who ditches high school sweetheart at 18 to run off with that popular prom queen in his school. And then finally, when he's dumped age 31, was resembling a slightly slimmer Danny DeVito, who mostly stinks of fish. So then, when he's so unappealing to the rest of the world, he then just decides to desperately poke his teenage ex on Facebook. Ozzy, when Rooney left Manchester United in 2017, the guy didn't have European clubs hanging off his armpits. Instead, he was fending off links to China and Stoke. It's like if in five years, Newcastle gave the managerial gig to Andy Carroll. Another man who spent the best years of his career away from the club. People seem to be so offended by Rafa Benitez winding up at Everton because of how unwelcome the fans made him feel while his boss at Anfield. Oh no! Well, the Everton fans used to call him Rafa beneath us. Oh my heavens! That could never work! Ah, I'm sorry. S so what? Let's be honest. Because of Rafa's heavy involvement with the Hillsborough Memorial, Everton fans were never exactly throwing cups of vomit at him in the street. I mean, every time he entered Tesco with his wife, I don't think he had to constantly brace himself for a toothless Everton fan smearing dog poo on the bonnet of his car. But Rooney, for 13 years of abuse every time he set foot in Goodison Park, suddenly nothing was off limits. Former neighbours and childhood friends were now comparing his wife to Peppa Pig, and there were screams of Shrek from every angle of the ground. I mean, I'm pretty sure you'd never have caught him sitting in Burger King in Liberal City Centre. Clearly, Rooney would walk out of the fast boy joint with Pepsi in his hair and about nine burger stains on his jumper. And that's not just because he's a messy eater. Walk through a Liverpoolian TK Maxx and he'd suddenly have scouse grannies trying to stab him in the thigh with a pencil. This is a man who kissed the badge of Manchester United on your ground. The ultimate insult. That's like if Tiger Woods had continued to romance his lady friends right outside his ex-wife's bedroom window. Just having sleepovers on her lawn. I mean, when his former wife is trying to sit down to enjoy her morning 
morning muesli, and here he is making love to a stripper on the couch. Oh, how very nice. Rooney has said that while a Man United player, oh, he never stopped wearing Everton pajamas to bed. And for that reason alone, all is forgiven? I don't even believe that. To me, he looks like someone who probably sleeps nude in the bath. Everton cannot appoint a manager who has kissed another team's badge in their stadium twice. Rooney, he has never helped himself. Not least when in 2004, he sold his life story to the sun. Again, to the people of Liverpool, that's the equivalent of taking a wee on the kitchen table. And even during the Stevie G title race of 2014, oh, this is what his wife was saying on Twitter. Good luck to Liverpool FC today. Great season, fingers crossed. Uh, I'm speechless. You want the Everton job after that? Soon you'll be demanding to be godfather to Jimmy Vardy's kids, just no! Once a blue, now a red, in our hearts you are dead. Right then, so I guess we're about to see a walking corpse sitting in Everton's dugout. Nice, it will look like a scene out of Shaun of the Dead. Listen, Rooney is doing a very good job in impossible circumstances at Derby County right now, but that doesn't qualify you to get an elite Premier League job. Derby right now are a financially crippled disaster. A club who can't even keep Phil Jagielka out of the hands of Stoke and he turns 40 this year. This is a sinking ship. I mean, even the guy who wipes down toilets in the changing room, even he's probably weighing up a better contract offer from the local post office. But to me, creating an us against the world siege mentality, scrapping for your lives in a dressing room that probably stinks of cat piss, that isn't tactical brilliance. It's just the ability to galvanize a bunch of journeymen whose odds are stacked against them. Let's not forget last season, Rooney ended the campaign with six points from a possible 45, including a sequence of seven defeats in a don't you patronize Rooney by trying to justify this decision by him being able to work miracles at the bottom of the championship. I mean, where were you at Everton Football Club when Barnsley pulled off the great escape under Gerard Struber two years ago? I mean, offer that name to Moshiri and he would react the same way as if you'd asked him to breastfeed a horse. I mean, if this was Nigel Pearson working a Derby County miracle or a typical Neil Warnock, you wouldn't look twice. I mean, Christ, about well, four years ago, Darren Moore nearly pulled off the great escape with a dead West Brom in similar circumstances. And I didn't see his name linked to any big club. Not once. Everton are just looking for any excuse to give this gig to Wayne Rooney. Any excuse at all. But not to mention, there are certain clubs you should just not take managers from. Swansea City, short by all means. They tend to produce managers who instantly do well on the next job. Roberto Martinez at Wigan, Brendan Rodgers at Liverpool, Gary Monk at Leeds, Graham Potter at Brighton, Steve Cooper at Nottingham Forest, even Bob Bradley at LAFC, and Carlos Carvajal at Rio Ave. But Derby coaches, it's a curse. Paul Jewell at Ipswich, Nigel Clough at Sheffield United, Steve McLaren at Newcastle, Paul Clement at Swansea, Nigel Pearson at Leuven, Steve McLaren at QPR, Frank Lampard at Chelsea. Every one of them was a failure in the next job. It's a curse, Christ well, even Brian Clough. Arguably the greatest manager on the planet at the time. Even he was sacked after just a month at Leeds. Don't you dare appoint managers from Derby County. Why do you think nobody has since asked for Philip Koku's number? I think we all know after that Midlands experience, he's suddenly gonna be a tactical donut in his next job. Appointing a manager from Derby County is like a CEO of a billion dollar company. Giving a senior role to someone who lives in a sleeping bag under a bridge and who uses Kit Kats to clean his teeth while snorting milk up his nose. But anyway, Rafa Benitez is finished. He is done. And how sad it had to come this way, being booed off some damp pitch in Norwich. This is a Champions League winner who's coached the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo. And here he was watching his Everton team being beaten up by a championship standard lump of cauliflower. How degrading is this after everything is achieved in the sport? And it's his former enemy Everton who've allowed him to smear his reputation through a broken septic tank. It's just a bit embarrassing. Make no mistake about it, we are never going to see Benitez manage in the Premier League ever again. Trust me, clip this off. It's just correct. After this Everton mess, prospective Premier League owners will look at his face the same way as if he was the great Aunt Margaret licking earwax off a fork. Right, well, if he dares to apply for the next job at Tottenham or Leicester, the owners will be yawning through his PowerPoint presentation and trying to alert security. Honestly, I'm guessing Daniel Levy would probably demand that Rafa's chair be disinfected with soap. Anything to rid the room of that failed finished manager stink. After those towns, it is a player who seems like he's been living in Rafa Benitez's shirt pocket for years, right? I mean, apparently the Spaniard is a cold, calculated, almost sociopathic type of personality, right? I mean, this guy's got the warmth of Judy Dench. He probably hasn't even kissed his own wife since 2003. And yet, I wouldn't be surprised if he probably used to spoon feed towns in his morning rice krispies every breakfast. The man's been weirdly obsessed with buying in for years, but strangely, Townsend has only ever actually played 25 Premier League games of his career under Benitez. Tries to love he was able to pick Jermaine Pennant more than that. It seems weird because in my head, 
They've been an inseparable double act for years. But listen, I respect Rafa Benitez for the brilliant manager he once was. But let's be honest, the last truly great job he did was at Liverpool when he led them to second place in the Premier League in 2009, whilst demolishing Real Madrid 5 0 in the in the Champions League. Ever since then, it's been mostly downhill. He was given the ready made European Champions at Inter Milan. Couldn't last past Christmas. Yes, he won the Europa League at Chelsea, but I should hope so. They were the reigning Champions League winners. And that was a competition where Alan Pardew nearly reached the final with Mike Williamson at centre back and Sammy Amiobi on the wing. Let's not forget, it was an unconvincing Europa League run where they still lost to the likes of Stau Bucharest and Ruben Kazan. They bottled the League Cup semi final against Swansea in a tie where Eden Hazard tried to play keepy uppies with the ball boy's kidney. Yes, he won silver with Napoli, but he inherited a team who Walter Mazzari had led to second less than 10. 10 points from the Serie A title. By the time Benitez left two years later in 2015, he led them to fifth, nearly 30 points off the pace. And as soon as he left, they were back up to second again under Marzio Sarri. He lasted six months at Real Madrid, which was a bit harsh, but still, he did lose 4 0 at home in El Clasico. And listen, Newcastle fans utterly love Benitez. When he left, it was like they just discovered the news that their granny had suffered a stroke in the back. Rafa Benitez is gone. Um, I am a little bit lost for words, a little bit good. I am pretty disappointed. Just, I really don't know what to say. Really don't. There's got to be a dinosaur that comes in as well. It could be someone who's been out of the game. We're not going to get any better than Rafa Benitez. But, and I hate to do this, but he was appointed Newcastle manager in March 2016 when they were a point behind 17th with a game in hand. Oh yeah, an arm to the squad featuring footballers who've gone on to play for the likes of Tottenham, PSG and Leicester. Two of them have played in the Champions League final. And instead, Benitez couldn't outperform an elderly caveman as Sam Allardyce with a better squad and went down. Again, the job in the Championship was underwhelming. They lost 10 goddamn games and were dumped out of the EFL Cup by Hull and the FA Cup by Oxford. Were it not for a Brighton bottle job in the last minute of the season that Rafa Benitez would have led Newcastle United to second in the championship. And listen, finishing 10th as a newly promoted club is fantastic, yes, but put it in context, they managed 44 points. West Ham once got relegated with 42. Under Benitez, that season, this team went on a run where they picked up one point from nine games. And the following season began with 10 games without a win. If his name wasn't Rafa Benitez and instead, oh, I don't know, Steve Bruce or Alan Pardew, then he wound up having had cabbages chucked at his face as I cost a coffee. Again, they wound up 13 to 45 points. And I know he was working under terrible conditions at Newcastle, but Steve Bruce equaled his points tally two seasons in a row. This guy who stuffed in a relegation battle out in China, and again, another one with Everton. Benitez is finished. Players clearly don't respond to his methods. His tactics seem to be from the era of Jurassic Park, and the, the guy is just being left behind. This is a man who is used to having leaders in his dressing room, but now half his players are just glued to their iPhones playing Candy Crush in the warm-up. How is he supposed to get his ideas through to the players when Ben Godfrey sitting in the corner swiping Tinder until his fingernails turn blue? Benitez is done in the Premier League. But that doesn't mean he should just suddenly retire and start painting naked cats in his shed. No. Take a leaf out of Manuel Pellegrini's book. After a Chinese failure and mid-table embarrassment at West Ham, he's currently doing an excellent job as boss of Real Batiste. Ozzy, Benitez will wind up back at Valencia soon, where he can try to get them back into Europe. Sure, but as a top-tier coach, he is done. But yeah, as for Everton, go hire Jose Mourinho! Anyway, that's it. What do you think? All right, should Wayne Rooney be given the job? Should it be Frank Lampard? Is Benitez done? Let me know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.